Hi, my name is Douglas Pfeiffer. I am Director of English Undergraduate Studies at Stony Brook University, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to our student speaker, Emma Cesario. Each year, our department's faculty chooses one graduating senior to receive the English Departmental Award, which brings with it the honor of delivering the student address. This award is for a student who's demonstrated outstanding academic achievement in English and has undertaken significant service to departmental culture. Although our group of candidates was remarkably strong this year, the award committee was unanimous in the decision to grant it to Emma. She has already received many of Stony Brook's highest accolades. She's recipient of the Stony Brook Academic Achievement Award two times. She's been on the Dean's List and in the uh, university's honors college from 2016 on, she's graduating with English honors, having written a brilliant thesis on Jane Austen. And in the past year, she has served as co-president of Alpha Nu Zeta, the Stony Brook English Honor Society. A term of service I can happily report that during which she fully revitalized the Honor Society by recruiting no fewer than 40 members. All this is beyond enough to earn her the award, but I should mention here that her commitment to the larger academic community well exceeds the English department and her particular chosen curriculum. She has delivered papers, for example, at the SUNY-wide Applied Learning Conference, and by all reports, um, was one of the central most presenters in that event. She also uh, presented at the Modern Language Association in 2019, the, the MLA, the Modern Language Association, being the central institution of the study of the modern languages. As one of her teachers put it in words that speak, I think, for many of us who have had Emma in a class, she is, quote, one of the most talented and engaging students I have ever had the pleasure to work with. So please join with me in welcoming Emma to deliver this year's English Department Convocation Student Address. Dear fellow graduates, a week before the start of my junior year, I received an email from my American literature professor, Dr. Ulster, alerting me that class would take place in the Poetry Center rather than in the pre-assigned room in the Physics Building. When I entered class the following Monday, I was surprised to see chairs arranged around a long table. As my classmates trickled into the room, there were about a dozen of us, we sat as though for a meal. Although Dr. Ulster did eventually bring us homemade desserts, for most of the semester, our food consisted of contemporary American novels. Possibly, you have gathered with your family or roommates around a table for a slow meal during this lockdown, enjoying what were once rare moments of conversation. If so, you have a picture of what those days in the Poetry Center were like, as each member of our class family contributed to the shared literary conversation. Fellow English graduates, looking back, we can remember sitting at a lot of different tables, especially in our beloved humanities building. True, we ate donuts Dr. Robinson brought to Shakespeare class, or the apples Dr. Pfeiffer brought to the Paradise Lost Marathon reading. But food isn't exactly what I have in mind. Alone in the atrium, we bammed our heavy Norton anthologies onto one of those round tables, settling in for a long afternoon of reading Beowulf. While other college students studied with Spotify jamming in their AirPods, we held our ears open to the cadences of the poetry, listening to the voice of a writer from a millennium ago. We sat in offices at desk tables with our professors, surrounded by stacks of well-loved and well-worn books so high, we wondered if Milton might plummet onto our heads as Satan plummeted from paradise. At these tables, 
Our professors poured us coffee and Edgar Allan Poe themed mugs. As we also poured our thoughts about our readings, our careers, and our lives. And just as we listened to the voices of Jane Austen and James Joyce, Hughes and Hawthorne, so our professors listened to us as the minutes passed into hours and the coffee mugs were emptied. Later, the conversation continued, even as our professors sat alone at their office tables, listening to our ideas and insights in our papers. As they sat there marking our essays, they were working tirelessly to improve our craft of expression diligently training us to hold our ears more closely to the test, the text. But they always valued our voices and gave their ears fully to the stories we've told through our literary interpretations. And we listened to them too. Sitting at tables in lecture halls, we learned from their expertise and research amazed at how much clearer words were it seemed after a lecture with Dr. Manning and how grammar just made sense after going to 207 with Spectre. In these same lecture halls, our professors ran up and down the stairs with a microphone, making sure each student's thoughts were heard. Thank you, Dr. Shekel. Even in the time of Zoom University, when the word microphone has taken on a whole new meaning, we are still participating in the literary conversation. Sitting in our pajamas, at our kitchen tables, with Shakespeare balanced next to our homemade banana bread, literature reminds us that we truly are not alone. And we are inspired to tell our own stories about today's hardships, knowing that this dialogue between the reader and the writer, the listener and the speaker, this is what leads us to greater compassion, truth, and hope. In Lease of Grass, Walt Whitman invites all people to sit at his table. This is the meal equally set, he writes. This is the meat for natural hunger. It is for the wicked just the same as the righteous. I make appointments with all. I will not have a single person slighted or left away. At our tables of life and literature, there is no worthless experience, no story unworthy of expression. The past four years have taught us this, as we have listened to the voices of slaves and immigrants, sick and healthy, rich and poor, the powerful and the powerless. Today, we celebrate a profound and joyous achievement, and I celebrate alongside each and every one of you. But social distancing has also left us feeling moored in a no man's land of unproductivity and uncertainty. Success feels more intangible and fragile. This is when we turn to what literature has taught us. And we remember that our value lies not in our greatest achievements, nor in our moments of highest productivity or confidence in the future, but it instead rests on the God-given humanity we all share. Our joy in the last four years has been found at the tables where we've shared that humanity with our professors, our classmates, and the authors we have come to love.